you supply your variable name, which I would just name the same thing as what you put in your action. You give it a data type, which you want to be consistent with the column that you're going to be modifying. So for example, my project column, it has a base type that is a string. So I'm putting text there and then you can supply a default value. The following video is a recap of our Planet Workspace webinar. If you would like to see more content like this in the future, subscribe and press the notification bell down below. I'm sure you guys have all thought as developers, man, why does it take so many clicks for my user base to edit one or two columns of data? I'm sure you may have heard complaints from the user base about how many clicks it takes to get into a form and then save the form. And uh, if you ever found yourself in that position, you're in the right place. Also, if you've ever thought, man, as a developer, it is so challenging to update either a parent record from a child record or update a record in a different table that is unrelated. You're also in the right place. So the input feature is going to help us do both of those things. So what it does, uh, first thing it does, it's going to help us set column values for one row of data very quickly. What it's going to do is it's going to provide a quick pop-up experience upon the selection of the button or however you trigger the, the pop-up. You know, there are a couple different ways you can trigger client-side actions in AppSheet. So the easiest is going to be through displaying an action button, but you can also do it through row select or even a form save. So you're going to do one of those methods and it's going to bring a quick pop-up where you can modify your input values and then save your changes. So super easy there. The second thing, if you want to flip the slide there. I got a question real quick. Yep. Um, so the input function actually was added after I stepped out of primary development role. So I've never used it at all. Um, mm. I've never used the input function. Do you have to have a column in the table it's associated with Correct. in order to use it? Correct. Okay, so it's not just a yes. free input. Box. And it's going to inherit the properties of that column. So if it's, you okay. know, you've got a drop down or an enum list mm. or whatever that so is, that it's going to provide that column type. Also data and constraint in that way as well. So you wouldn't be able to put numbers exactly. or text in a number field. Okay. Interesting. Exactly. Yes. Cool. Yes. Now the, that, that is a helpful feature, but I think the second use case is actually much more powerful. And for me as a developer, it saves me so much time um, in, uh, and I'll try to explain why. So what it's, what it's doing is it's enabling you to provide a cross table data translation. What that means is you are essentially taking a value from one column and one table, and you're putting it into a different column and a different table. And the experience there is relatively seamless. Um, so the way that you used to have to make this happen, it's, uh, and I hope you guys are following here because it, it's a little challenging to explain, but essentially you'd, you'd have to provide some sort of mechanism to know which row you just updated. And then you would go into a, another table, you perform an action uh, that then will do a query on maybe the most recently updated row in the table you just updated. And you have to apply that query for every column that you want to change in this other table. It was a bit of a nightmare. So what the input function or input feature allows you to do is very quickly provide a value from your current row that then will be applied to one or more or sorry, one or more rows in a different table. So in the screenshot here, you'll see what we're doing is we have a project table and we are going to update a user variables table using our the action that we're going to trigger is our input project action. Whenever we apply this and it is using this input feature, uh, it's going to have an additional pop-up that happens below that in a different section that says with these inputs and you're allowed to specify a row value from your current row. Now, I wasn't planning on sharing screen, but I feel like it may be helpful to do a very brief screen share so that you can see it in action. Here we go. So first things first, I would like to take you into 
the project table, uh, sorry, I think it's the user variable table where the base input action is. And I want you to see how this is constructed. So creating an action, we supply a table. The type of action is going to be to set the values of some rows or some columns in this row. And then the syntax here is a little interesting. It's going to provide an input and you're essentially dereferencing a an arbitrary uh, variable name that you supply. So I could have named this anything. Um, and you're going to put that in brackets. So underscore input dot some variable name in brackets. So they've brought it more in line with the syntax that we've got in the rest of this app. And rest exactly. App. Yep. Nice. Yep. So it kind of assimilates a dereference. In addition, you'll see whenever I do that, there's a an advanced section to this action that uh, is, you know, a lot of you modified, and it has this whole input section. So you supply your variable name, which I would just name the same thing as what you put in your action. You give it a data type, which you want to be consistent with the column that you're going to be modifying. So for example, my project column, it has a base type that is a string. So I'm putting text there. And then you can supply a default value. I will say, however, I've had mixed results with this working. So if you don't get it to work, um, there are other ways to set column values in, in your current row. Uh, you may consider that. All right, so that is step one. If you want to update this from a different table, what you'll need to do is go to that different table. You're going to create an action on a set of rows. So in this case, I've created an action on my project table. It is an action on a set of rows. It's going to affect the user variables table, which is where we created this input action. The referenced row would be the row related to my email. And uh, the action that we're going to supply is the input project action. Whenever we do this, if we've already saved our changes um, after you create the initial input action, you will then get this additional section here that allows you to specify the name of the variable or the input that you're modifying and what value from the current row you want to supply in that column, the variable. So very, very cool. And I want you to see in action how this works. So what I'm gonna do is I've kind of got a stepped sequence of views that you would follow to get to an end destination. And what I would like to do is ultimately put you into a dashboard that is filtered based on the project that you select here. So in this case, I'm going to select field install two, and it's going to take me to a dashboard that would be filtered by field install two. So here is a view of our user variables table, uh, one use case, and then the first and foremost use case is if you select that button, you'll see a pop-up where you can modify whatever, however many columns you've included in that input action. That's awesome and then you save your changes. So really cool feature. So glad that AppSheet made it. Makes my life as a developer a lot easier. Would love to hear your questions, comments, concerns. <laughs> yeah, so I know that previously with the input function, what you and I would do the most was we would set a value inside the user table from a record in a other table. And what this would do is it would say like, let's say it's projects and you want that user to have a current project. We'd use the input function to do that project, but it would never bring up the input box. Is there still a way to do that? Or is the input box always required now? Yeah, I believe if you don't supply a value and you're performing an action on a set of rows, the action that you're triggering is an input action, it will still give you that pop-up. What if you don't want the pop-up? If you don't want the pop-up, you should supply a value. So even if that value okay. is null and it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be dynamic, doesn't have to be a value okay. from your current row, it could just be, you know, double quotes. It should avoid the pop-up. Nice. Cool. That's awesome. So in that scenario, is there any difference between having using the input feature versus just having an action on a set of rows that sets a value? If, I mean, if you're not doing it dynamically uh, to add a value from your current row, I, I don't necessarily see the benefit of it, um, okay. but it is theoretically achievable. 
Fair enough. Cool. Is there? You also have it. You could also have it conditionally logical. So under certain conditions, it may supply a value from your current row, and other under other conditions, it may not. Do you prefer the previous or the current version of input? From a syntax standpoint, there there were less things to modify with the previous syntax, but I think it's more clear what's happening the way that they have it set up now. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Yeah, sweet. Well, the way the way that I typically used the old input feature was just a quick way to do it, and it wasn't like there was never default values. You could never get anything like that to work. So. I like. Um, I think it's. I think it's a nice feature, but nice. So helpful. Yeah, we we Cameron and I are in a project together, and we use it uh, for so many things. So many things mm -hmm. because there there's oftentimes we we find ourselves needing to create these sequenced views where we're needing to dynamically change things within the app logic based on a selection that a user has made on a row. And in those cases, we're having to do both the navigation action as well as uh, essentially capture some sort of variable data that we'll then use to filter the app experience or change the app logic. And so we use it in a lot of different places. Mm -hmm.